Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. In this video in the Life Explained series, I would like to explore with you the Luciferian Doctrine. Now, you may know about Lucifer, but have you heard about the Luciferian Doctrine and how it influences our world today? To understand where it came from, we have to go back to the 11th century. All of Europe was in the firm grip of the Catholic Church. At that time, the Church was sending thousands of men as crusaders to recapture the Holy Land and in particular Jerusalem, which had fallen into Muslim hands. Now, who were these men, these crusaders? They came from all walks of life. The one thing they had in common was their belief in the Catholic teachings. However, when these men traveled to the Middle East, they were suddenly exposed to many different beliefs and spiritual teachings that they had never heard before. These teachings came from Judaic and Islam mysticism, they came from Egypt, from Greece, and even from faraway places like India. For some of these men, they were a truly mind-blowing experience. They also began to hear different interpretations of familiar biblical texts, things they had never heard in their church. One particular passage stood out. It was a story of the snake tempting Eve with the apple. The Catholic Church had taught them that the snake was Lucifer or Satan, who deceived Eve by promising that if she would eat from the forbidden tree, she would become like God. Suddenly these men were introduced to a very different interpretation. They heard that Lucifer was not evil or Satan, but the God who wanted to save and educate mankind. In truth, they called him the light bringer, the real God, and that Yahweh, or Adonai in the Bible, was in actuality the devil, the suppressor of mankind, because he didn't want Eve and Adam to know their true identity. This teaching became the famous Luciferian doctrine. Now, when these men returned home from the Holy Land, they continued talking about these new ideas and interpretations. But they knew they could only do so under strict secrecy, as the Church would torture and kill anybody who would question or challenge their teachings and authority. This eventually led to the birth of many secret societies, most famously the Templars, the Rosencrucian and the various Masonic Orders. These very mixed teachings from many different occult traditions were secretly studied, eventually and wrapped in rituals and protected by gruesome and blood-curdling oaths that the members had to swear to ensure secrecy. But everything changed in the year 1888 when the founder of the Theosophical Society, Madame Blavatsky, made most of these teachings public in her famous book The Secret Doctrine, which she spiced up with some of her own fanciful imaginations. Central to Madame Blavatsky's teaching was the Luciferian Doctrine. The first edition of her book stated that Lucifer is the only God for our planet. No surprise that her magazine was also called Lucifer. It was a beginning of what we now would call the New Age. Originally, it was promoted as the time when the Lightbringer, Lucifer, would lead mankind to a new era of tolerance and peace. Rudolf Steiner started off as the secretary of the German Theosophical Society. He later founded the Anthroposophy movement. Another famous person was Alice Bailey, who founded the Lucifer Publication Company in 1922. And then there was the well-known science fiction writer H.G. Wells, who also published a book called The New World Order in 1940. With this book he promoted a world government and a secular world religion. Other important figures were Annie Besant and Charles Ledbetter, who thought that they had found the future world teacher in a 14-year-old Hindu boy called Krishnamurti. However, this did not work out as planned. Krishnamurti eventually dissolved the entire organization. So, the Luciferian doctrine is not only central to members of highest degrees in some elite Masonic circles, but also expressed in several New Age teachings of today. Let's look how this doctrine influences our life. Here we have the planet Earth, where according to the Luciferian doctrine, the worldly affairs are ruled by the Lord Lucifer. Now, as spiritual beings, we come from the spiritual worlds to incarnate for a very short lifespan here on Earth. Most of us do it to clear up past karma or eventually return to a higher spiritual sphere or return even to our spiritual home from where we all came. But if we forget who we are 
or don't believe in life before or after death, we can easily be tempted to dedicate our life to accumulation of riches, power, fame and other stuff that makes us important and special. We might even fall for some New Age Guru teachings promising unbridled riches and abundance. Our purpose here is to develop the kingdom within and not the kingdom without. But if we want worldly riches, our God and orientation would naturally be this guy here, Lucifer, the only God of our planet, as Madame Blavatsky put it. He rules the worldly affairs and with him many heads of politics, military, finance and industry. But it does come with a hefty price. Anybody who aligns himself with this God of the world to obtain riches, power, fame and so on, enters a Faustian bargain. Chances are they will become his servant after their physical death. Such energies are never given for free. Now, in addition, the Luciferian doctrine also states that we are God, which is also a very popular belief among some New Age teachings. The danger is that when we think we are God, we are convinced we can get away with anything. We feel that we are only accountable for our actions to ourselves. In other words, we could harm or even kill somebody and justify it with something that simply had to be done without any guilt or remorse and totally ignoring that such an action has created an enormous karma for our soul. Somebody who thinks he is God does not feel accountable to anybody else except himself. Now finally let's look around this world and see how powerful the Luciferian influence already is. We see the evidence everywhere in the wars, the terrorism, exploitation and suffering, greed and so on. It is based on the Freemason principle Ordo Ab Chaos, order from chaos, which justifies any actions to bring the new world order into existence. Many see this as a totalitarian form of world government. The goals of this new world order are not secret. They are outlined in the American Stonehenge for anybody to see. They are the Georgia Guidestones, erected in 1980. It is a huge granite monument in which 10 new guidelines are engraved in eight different languages. These guidelines are supposed to replace the 10 commandments given to Moses. Two of the most interesting guidelines say that mankind should be reduced to half a billion people only. That means many must die for the benefit of a few. This will be the result of the order out of chaos. They also say that family planning must be controlled by the authority to keep the number down. It is not my goal to convince anybody about the existence of the Luciferian doctrine. I merely offer and if it works for you, fine, if it not, it's okay too. Now, if the material for this video I have taken from the research and from the books by Armin Riesi and Jan van Helsing. But there are a lot of other books on this topic if you want to explore it further. Thank you for your company.